Okay, I've ironed out a piece of the Yellow Baby Chicks. This is the background fabric for Hollyhock. I need a 10 inch piece. So this is on the 24 inch line. I'm just going to go over here to the 34 inch line and cut that. And I'm going to go iron the crease out so that I can get a nice flat piece. Okay, I'm just going to put this other end way down here on the zero on my mat and make sure the this at top edge is along a line so I get a straight cut. I'm going to go to the 24 inch mark and cut my 24 inch piece. I've got some extra pieces of this fabric and I just like to put this the little pieces with the large fabric so that if I need little pieces they are uh, where I would look for it first. I'm going to take this over to the ironing station and I'm going to fold it in half, wrong sides together, and create a crease down the center. I'm going to just put this bottom edge on a line. I'm going to make sure my crease is on a line on the mat so that it is straight. I'm not drawing wonky diagonal lines. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure two and a half inches up from the bottom edge of the fabric and I'm going to draw with a friction marker a line so that that's the bottom edge this line that I just drew with the fine point is the bottom edge of where these little quarter inch strips will be ironed on. These are backed with heat and bond light and they still have paper on the back of them right now. So I need to come over an inch and a quarter. I'm going to put my ruler, the bottom edge of my ruler, on the edge of the line I drew and I'm going to come one and a quarter inches over from the crease and if I can't see the crease through the ruler I can still see that that crease is on, that's on the 31 inch line so I know that the ruler's straight and I'm going to start, let's see, on the 19 and it's right up here and I'm going to draw a line. Alright, that's good. I could flip the ruler around and go the other way but I'm right handed so I'm going to turn it. I'm going to put my crease, center it on a line, make sure that it's right one and a quarter inches over from the crease. I'm going to put my ruler on the bottom on that line right there again. This is just how my brain thinks guys. You might think it's backwards but I like it. Okay and here let's see. Here's the 15. So it's upside down to me now. I'm okay with that. I'm going to start here. I'm going to draw my line all the way to the 15. Alright there we go. Perfect. So now I have my drawn lines an inch and a quarter away from the center crease. Perfect. Now I'm going to go to the ironing station and iron my strips onto this and center the strips on the drawn lines. All right, that was really easy. It worked out really well. Now I'm going to go over to the domestic sewing machine. I'm going to do a blanket stitch all the way up and down on both of these and mimic what it would look like when the embroidery machine does it from Embrilliance. I have a cone of the embroidery thread I would use on a stand behind the machine and I have an embroidery bobbin in the bobbin case so this is what I'm going to use to mimic being on the embroidery machine. I think it'll work out fine. I can look up here on the inside of the lid of all of the stitches. This is the Brother NQ3700D combo machine. So it is a sewing and embroidery machine. I love it. And it's my travel machine because it's so small. So on pattern grouping number two, number three is actually a blanket stitch with the little blanket stitches going the correct direction. Let me get in and show you real close. What you're looking for I go through here and just look at the patterns and see what would work. 
there's nothing in group number one that would work. Now, in group number two, number three has the blanket stitches going to the left, which is what I'm looking for. Number four has the blanket stitches going to the right. See that? So they, they point, they stitch different directions. These go this way to the right, and these go this way to the left. So when you're checking out your machine stitch, what will work for you, be sure to pick the right one. On this particular machine, it defaults to pattern group number one. I'm just going to touch this button right here that has the stitches with ABC, and I'm going to go to number two. Actually, I had gone back to home, and that's, that's the home menu for embroidery. Uh, I don't have the embroidery unit on, so I can just touch this button right here with stitches and lettering. Touch that, and then I want to go to group two. There's my blanket stitch right there, number three. I'm going to touch that. And this is what the stitch is going to look like, so I get a preview, which I really like. And then I want to change the stitching a little bit, so there is a stitch options button right up here in the corner. And I want to drop the stitch width down to 2.5. And you can see it change here. I think that'll look just fine. I want to use a fairly narrow stitch width because this is only a quarter of an inch wide. Matter of fact, a two would probably be even better, but I'm just going to leave it right there. And the length is 2.5, and I'm going to go down to 2.2 .2 on that. You can look and run a test if you need to to see how it will work. I'm just going to tell it OK, and I'm ready to go now and stitch this down. giving it a little bit of tension from the back. How's that look? That looks really good. This is going to take me a minute, so I'll get back to you guys in just a bit. Okay, it's all finished. It looks pretty good. Um, I got, I'll got. i get up close where you guys can see the stitching. I got a couple of times where I got away from it a little bit. Sometimes I went a little in too far. So like, I'm going to point this out, like this right here. See how this stitching is too far away? You can see a white line. That's the fabric. I got it too far away there. That's okay. I'll make sure to put a blossom over that. And if a blossom doesn't fit over that, I'll use a Sharpie and color it in. Nobody will know the difference. Down here at the bottom, I got away from it just a little bit right there. That's going to be covered with leaves, okay? On the bottom of the stem, I didn't get all hung up on stitching that. That's going to be covered with a leaf. So that will work. It took me just a couple of minutes. And so now it looks like it's going to look like the rest. I got a little, I got a little thread right there I got to cut. But that's not even finished up there. That's going to be covered with a blossom. So make it easy on yourself, OK? All right, I'm going to press this to get my little bit of wrinkles out. Let me back out so you guys can see a little better. It's got a little bit of wrinkling. That's OK. I'm just going to press it out. It'll be nice and flat. OK, I have got all of these circles cut out for the blossoms, and I have placed them pretty much according to the way Lori has them on her blog picture. And this large Blossom down here is two and a half inches up from the bottom line. You can't really see it that well because it's a fine line, or at least the bottom edges of these stems. And then this one is two and three quarters inches up and so on. And so I've pretty much placed them all where they need to go. Now, what I did was I printed out each one of these templates from the embroidery design in Brilliance, okay? And I labeled them what they are. So this one is HH05, so that's Hollyhock 05. Now, if you do not have a camera system, and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do this to all of these anyway, just so I know exactly where to place it, either with the camera system or a, if you've got the Luminaire or Solaris, you can project the image down to figure out where everything needs to go. This is what you will use to align everything. And I pre-folded these templates 
on the crosshair both directions. It just makes them easier. And then what I did was I, I placed all the circles where I think they ought to go. And then I'm going to take the paper and I'm going to lay it right on top and try to get the circle edges as best I can so that it's right on top and then reach underneath and pull away the fabric, okay? And then fold it over in half. And I'm going to take my marker, I'm going to make a mark, and then there I can see there's the fold and make a mark right here. See, I had moved this a little bit and I put the number five. So I know that HHO5 is right here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a get rid of that one so see now it's marked okay I did the same thing here there's a crosshair and the number five so I know to put my needle I want needle on center right there and I need to use pattern number five to stitch that right there same goes for that one Okay, so that's how they're going to go into the hoop. I will do that for all of these. So I'm going to continue to do that to all the rest of these and then I'm going to put it into the machine. I have a piece of no-show mesh on the back. I don't have any SF-101 on the back of this because there's no heavy satin stitching so we should not have any kind of problem with puckering or anything like that. And there's a piece of dog fur. I'm over here at the Brother PR 1055 10 needle. I have thread for fabric number one on spool number one, fabric number two on spool number two, and so on all the way to spool number five for fabric number five. So the spool that's chosen is based on the fabric that is used not on the, the one through five sizes of the circles. I have my fabric hooped. There's no SF-101 on the back and it's just a no-show mesh in the hoop. This is a dime, eight and a half by 12, I think, or eight and a half by 14 hoop, magnetic hoop, and that's what I prefer to use. So I'm going to stitch the three fives, all of the fours, and I'll see if I can't get in a three I will get as many in as I can in this hooping. When it comes to the threads, if you are doing this in a single needle machine, I would recommend that you choose a thread that closely matches all of the fabrics as possible. Or maybe you want one that's like one for the light fabrics and one for the darker fabrics if you want to go that far. You don't have to. Otherwise, you're going to be changing threads non-stop. That's all you're going to be doing and it's going to drive you crazy on a single needle. So on the multi-needle, I can just tell it, you know, whatever fabric I need, that's what thread I will use and it will do it for me automatically. So this is the printout from the blog and what I did was I went and numbered each fabric, not the design size. So the design size, these three big ones were HHO5. Now I have put numbers on them according to the fabric that they were cut out of and I'm going to use these numbers to determine what spool of thread to use as I stitch all this down. So that's going to be really helpful if you do something like that it'll keep you straight. I've got to pull up the design. I put them into a USB stick here on the side of my machine and I'm going to touch the universal symbol for USB right here. So I'm going to hit USB. All right, so there they all are and they all kind of look the same and it's hard to see what's what. So let me go through and see if I can find. This one right here is probably HHO5. I'm figuring it went one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to touch that and let me see, that is 2.55 by 2.54. So I'm pretty sure that's the big one. Let me double check. So what I'm going to do is just stitch each design one at a time. I'm not going to stitch three of them at once because the odds of getting it wrong are pretty high since they're in so many different spots. If you're brave, you can. I'm just going to hit set. So that's the one I want. 
It, this menu allows me to delete what I did or go back to the beginning. I'm just going to hit set. And now I'm still in an edit menu. And that's why this button right here says edit end down at the bottom. So in the edit menu, you can add another one. If I wanted to do all three at once, I could click add and hit another HHO5 and bring it in. And I could, but I, I don't want to do that. Here you can change the size or rotate or mirror. Do not fiddle with the size at this point because you've already cut your pieces and the embroidery design is exact to the cut size of the fabric. So I'm going to just hit edit end. And on this screen, we're not ready to get into embroidery quite yet because we still have the embroidery button down here. This is where I want to assign a thread color. So this very first one that I'm going to do will be the one that is this one right here. So that is thread spool number two. So I'm going to touch my three thread spools and I'm going to tell it spool number two. So this column right here corresponds to the color stops that are in the design and these two columns right here correspond to the spools on the back of the machine. We've got a preview window right here. This tells you what color stop you're on, one of two. We have a hand for a stop. We have a do not stitch and we have the OK button. Now, before this stitches number two, and it says number two by default because it's color stop one, two, and, and these will go in consecutive order. Before it stitches this second one, I want it to stop so that I can iron the fabric. This machine reads, it, it's kind of backwards. You think it would be stitch then stop, but it's not. It's stop then stitch. We want the first color stop to stitch completely. On number two, before it stitches, I want it to stop. So I'm going to touch the hand and you'll get a little hand right there. And then it's going to stitch with spool number two. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. That's all I need to do. And the next time I do this, I'm going to go through and do the exact same thing, just using a different spool of thread. And this is how I'm going to make sure it's all right. So I'm going to click OK. Now we're ready to go into embroidery. However, on this machine, there's a camera and you can scan your background fabric with your camera. So I'm going to do that. It says the frame will move to be scanned with the built-in camera. I'm going to tell it OK. The camera is right under here. And I want to scan with the camera so I can make sure that the circle is going to land right where I want it to. Let me zoom in real close so you can see this. It's going to land right where I want it to with the blossom half on the stem. I can just touch this with my finger now or a stylus. I'm going to use a stylus and I can take the image and touch it and just move. Let me zoom in really close so you can see. I want that crosshair as close as possible to where I put the crosshair, but I need to move it just a little bit so that the edge of that blossom stitch line is halfway onto the stem. This is really, really accurate. And so it's important to try to get this as close as possible. I'm going to back out a little bit and I want to show you something about these buttons down here. We have these jog buttons right here, this set of nine jog buttons. This center button will drop the design directly back into the center of the hoop again. And then below these nine jog, these are placement buttons, there are three arrow keys down here. There's a single, a double, and a triple. If you have it on the single and that's highlighted, it's going to make micro little tiny movement adjustments. So I'll touch this arrow over and watch how far the design goes. Barely at all. I'm going to touch two arrows and that's going to change the distance of the move. So I'm going to touch the down arrow a little bit and that was pretty good. I don't know if you can hear the machine going jump, jump. And if you touch the third arrow, you're going to get a large movement. And that's handy if you've got some 
big movement landscape you need to cover. So look, now you can see my arrow, my crosshair in the purple that I put on the fabric was pretty close, but I can tell by the camera how close I actually am to this. If you've got a Luminaire or a Solaris, go ahead and project the design down onto your fabric and make sure that your flower blossom is kind of halfway over on that. But at least the crosshair that I drew puts me in the neighborhood of where I want to be. And then I can micro move the design to where I think it ought to go. Now I'm gonna move it down just a tiny bit. There. And I really like that. I think that's gonna stitch out just fine. Okay, so I'm done with this on the alignment. So I'm gonna to touch the embroidery key and it's ready to go. Now on this screen right here, what you have is a preview of what it is that it's gonna stitch. It tells you how long this stitch is gonna take. Right here, you're on color stop zero of two. It's only 335 stitches and it's only gonna take one minute. Down here, you've got the stop hand if you need to stop, or you can hit the lock button and lock it while it's stitching. This is the magic wand button. If you figure out halfway through that you touched the wrong color thread, you can go back and fix that midstream. Here's your needle plus minus button. This lets you fix any kind of boo-boos. We're ready to go, so I'm gonna point this down to the hoop so that you can see what's gonna happen. I'm just gonna touch lock and go. So see, there's needle number two. It's exactly what I'm looking for. And it went exactly where I wanted it to on the stem. And now I'm gonna iron this blossom right and stay as close as possible to this placement stitch line. This is a little Cricut mini press iron. I love this. It's the perfect size to do hoop work. And it gets nice and hot. And it only cuts off after 13 minutes. So you have a lot of time to get your work done. Okay, so I'm gonna press the lock button and it's gonna do the final blanket stitch. Okay, to make the light quit blinking, I'm gonna to touch okay. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna do is fabric number three, so that'll be spool number three. I'm gonna to touch the three thread spools and I'm gonna tell it three and I leave the hand on and I'm gonna tell it three, okay? Now, it's changed color up here. These colors are anchored from a previous project. It doesn't matter, the machine does not care what thread color is on the spool and in the needle. It doesn't care. All it knows is it needs to, I've told it to use spool number three. So I'm gonna tell it okay. So I didn't have to tell it to stop again or anything. Now I'm gonna go to embroidery. So if you can't see this when you get to this point, if you can't see your picture, you need to go into your settings and it's on page, let's get there. It's on page four, the background image display, be sure that is turned on and then tell it okay. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it right where I want it to be. Let me get you in. It's, just, it's hard to see because it's very faint because of the color I told it. But there it is, it's that light turquoise right there. That's actually pretty spot on, it is barely on each edge of the green stems right in the middle and that's what I'm looking for and it's really it's really placed in the right spot so I'm just going to tell it to go embroidery lock and go so look now it's using the third needle This is the beauty of the multi-needle, you guys. If you can swing it, go for it. You'll love every minute of it. 
and it stopped so that I can iron down the circle. I'm going to hit lock and go. All right, I'm going to jump to the next one real quick. I'm getting ready to rehoop, and I have to confess, I didn't cut the right fabric according to what Lori has on hers right here for this um, one, two, three, fourth one up. So what I ended up doing in the embroidery machine after it stitched the placement line, I used the needle plus minus button and I went back to that stitch again and I just set the fabric over it and I just set the fabric over it and let it do a tack down and then I trimmed it away with scissors and it stitched out just fine. I'll get up close where you can see it. It looks fine, okay? So if you make a mistake like that, it's completely recoverable. No big deal. 